All right, guys. So we're back. Um, in our previous episode, we covered drums. We're uh, edit and mixing drums. We covered bringing in percussion and bass on top of drums. We covered uh, implementing effects for depth, for purpose of depth, uh, depth and immersion. Um, cool. So now, <clears throat> um, on this episode, we're going to cover guitars. So here, uh, this is a, this is essentially what it looks like. Everything in green are my guitars. I have here my guitar solo. Uh, I'm going to have to clean that out. I just realized that was in there. Um, so, um, my guitar solo. Um, and then I have acoustic guitars, and then I have my lead electric guitars. And what is this over here? Oh, uh, some that's another acoustic, so those should be together. So, first things first, what I'm going to do is uh, title these. So, ACC1. Um, I should have, yeah, so it's going to be ACC. Um, one, two, and then A, C, C, two, and then A, C, C, two, two. Now, why I do that is because <coughs> A, C, C, acoustic guitar, um, three. The reason why I do that is because... <sighs> these are pairs. So these are recorded pairs. Um, they're doing the same exact patterns except just um, paired. Like, you know, two layers of them are essentially stacked. Same thing for these. And then I have acoustic guitar three, which is, I think, essentially doing just a different pattern altogether. Um, this is my solo guitar solo uh i have a friend of mine tim mo out of carolina that recorded um that for me great guy i love the way he plays um he played a good amount of stuff for me on my personal records um so <coughs> that's that and then there are these um these are all electric guitars. Once again, these are in pairs. So, so let's say, uh, ECG, oops, ECG one electric guitar one, and then ECG one, two, and then ECG two, and then ECG two, two. Cool. <coughs> so these are in pairs. Um, I think the first thing first that I should address is probably panning. So let me take care of the first pair of guitars. Cool. So let's go here. And oops, I don't want to mute those. All right, and then let's go here. Cool. All right. <coughs> so for the first pair, um, it's going to be hard pan left and right for me. <coughs> for the first pair, it's going to be hard pan left and right for me. And that does it because for me, it drives majority of the song. There you go, right there. <laughs> um, and then for the next set, it's going to be right inside a hard left and right. So I'll say 58, 58. Staying around my unity levels. Uh, the thing is, I had already addressed 
um, I had already addressed kind of like a gain staging for my guitars. So, notch it down. Negative 10 dBs. You can see it right there. Negative 10 dBs for those. And that was kind of like a unity for me in comparison to what was happening with these. <laughs> so I'll just bring it in and see what it sits sits like with the bass, with the drums and, <coughs> and percussion. So it's kind of doing what I want to do. It's like you actually sit sitting in a good place and it's adding to that immersion experience. These are very simple guitar patterns. For this song, I just felt like that's what I called for. And um, I'm a very big on voicing, so I'm very big on color and emotion and what emotion is portrayed by this. So, <coughs> so. very smooth, real smooth. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I just drank something and kind of got my throat all out of whack. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to address EQ. Now I'm not doing, I'm not gonna kinda, I'm not, at this point I'm not gonna worry about the whole um, flat response because it's already kinda sort of where I need it to be response wise as you can see. So all I'm doing really is just a high pass to kinda get rid of the mud. So let me just activate the to lighten them up. <coughs> so with them deactivated, you hear it's a lot darker. It's fuller, but it's going to affect me if I don't do the high pass later on in the next cool. And the next thing that I'm going to do is just make it a little brighter. Um, I just want to add a little sheen and I kind of want to get to where the pick is hitting the string. Now this is not a mic situation. This is all DI'd in. Um, I just love the way the Taylor sounds um, going straight in. Um, and that's just my preference. Some people that like it mic and you know, I understand it could be a lot smoother than this, but it just works out for me on my side and on my, my sound. So, <coughs> so just to add to that pick, to that sheen, I add, I do a bit, a boost at 12 point, a, a boost of 4 dBs at 12.4K. And I'll just activate those. And you hear it instantly. You can start hearing when the pick strums and becomes like dryly and kind of adds like a little grit to it, but it's real sweet. Now, because I did that, some things, um, because I did that boost in there to kind of claim that area or that domain, it may, it may hurt me in the long run in terms of dynamics. So I'm going to do something similar to what I did on the bass. When I added that compressor on the bass to tame it, um, I'm going to do a de -esser. Now, a de is a compressor, but um, essentially it's just a, a, it's, a com it's a compressor for the higher end, for the higher range of the spectrum. So... In my case, this DS is going to be covering uh, 5K or 5.5K and above. 5,500, yeah, so 5,500 5, hertz <coughs> and above. And that's going to be its compression point. And that's what it's going to be taming. It's not going to be taming the rest of the spectrum or the rest of the body. So the high mids or the low mid section of the guitar, uh, guitar, but just more so the high part the high mids um, the highs where i just boosted over here at 12.4k which may get out of control in terms of dynamics so i'm gonna add that there to just actually control that and say hey 
you know, I'm going to keep you at bay if at any point you decide to get out of control. I'm going to attenuate you. I'm going to push you down. And you see, it's, it's doing a little, you probably can't see, but it's doing just a little bit at the top anyway as it gets close. But, um, Here, where the dynamics really build, it's gonna have to attenuate things that may, in the high end, that may get out of control. So, that's kind of like a safety measure. Um, the sheen is still there, the brilliance is still there, but hey, chill. Don't, 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 don't surpass your limit. Alright? So, cool. That's where I'm at. <laughs> and the fifth guitar. Like I said before, I don't like things sharing the center of the singing. So that fifth guitar, I'm gonna just do a a plus ten, and then I'm gonna do the pass. You can barely hear it anyway. But now it's kind of just taking the center space, just a little, just to add, um, you know, just to make it a little fuller. <clears throat> So now, this is it in combination with what we did with drums, what we did with percussion, what we did with bass. Um, and this is how it's sounding as it comes together, as it's being sculpted together. And this is just acoustic, I didn't even bring in electric there. Okay, cool. Now. I think this would be the best time to bring in the imager. Um, once again, uh, once again, I pointed in episode, the episode where I was, where I mentioned, <coughs> um, I think it was the mixing the drums episode, so probably two episodes ago, that I I I closed in the width of certain. Um, certain instrument groups and then I open up the width to other certain instrument groups. The reason why is because I don't want anything sharing the same space. So usually if you do a hard pan, 100% hard pan left or right, if you did that to everything, essentially everything would be sharing that 100%. So that 100 degrees, 100, wherever that 100% degree lands, it'll be all sitting in that same area. And so what I like is for things to not share the same area so they can be heard. <coughs> so what I would do in this case is bring the imaging and I uh, widened it by point by, by um, point 45 So let's turn it. So let me see where we at. Cool bass. <clears throat> now when I add the keyboard, you'll see as well that it's gonna kind of push it back or push it backwards um, as well to kind of get it outside of that hard left and right and it'd be like hard hard left right <laughs> if that makes sense and then my pull tag i need to add uh i'm gonna add that later i'm gonna go back and add that later cool once i finish with the guitar so now it's time to bring in the electric guitar <clears throat> now in this um acoustic guitars kind of serve as the primary and electric guitars will serve as a secondary. So um, the acoustic guitar for me is more like the master instrument and the electric guitar is kind of like the slave instrument or the secondary instrument So in terms of priorities. And that's how, how I want it to stand out in the mix. So <clears throat> I'm gonna bring in my electric guitar. And they're just door lines, as you can hear. Now this is hasn't even been panned yet. <clears throat> so 
so it hasn't even been panned yet. So I'm gonna do fifty. And then I'm gonna be I'm gonna pan the I would say negative forty two. Now you can kinda see the role of what all these guitars are doing and what they're contributing to the mix. <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the previous uh, guitars. It's a simple high pass. It's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's a take away from the muddiness. So I can take control of that low mix section so it's not being covered or being um, so it's not being uh like not being dirty by the low frequency Hello. Without, without writing it up, the reason why I added the boost of the 5k plus 3, I mean plus 6, and then the 800 plus 2 is essentially merely just to brighten up. It's a solo that's happening and it kind of needs to sit in front of the mix. So, and those are the frequencies that are just going to drive that area. <clears throat> oh, that caused the guitar to stand up front. Just imagine like you're on stage and at, at a concert or something and, and, and you know, you just got that one guitar player that has a solo and he walks up to the front of the stage. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm breaking into the front of the stage. Last thing I'm gonna bring in, because I just needed to bring some more body back to the guitar, was a boost at 60. At 60 hertz, 3 dBs. Just to, just to make it like, just to make it, uh, just to make it warmer. Oh, 
hear it, if you hear it, it's very subtle. The imaging. I think I should talk a little bit of just the pre-production process of these guitars. So um, all the guitars were recorded pre-recording. So these were all done before the actual night. So we actually used these as stems the night of the recording. Um, same thing for the electric guitars. Yeah, everything was done. Well, not everything. I think I ended up doing a good amount of the electric guitars post recording um so that was part of the electric guitars were more so uh pro post process um um and i just used my fender strat i have a fender strat uh not even an american it's an it's a mexican i believe but the thing sounds amazing um <clears throat> and in the way of effects and plugins um i'm just very particular um i track through uh, uh an angle app um so it's a tube driven app that kind of just gives me that that drive and saturation that i'm looking for that you hear and, and majority of times i just overdrive it and then i have a helix um helix where of course if you know about guitars and the helix you got a plethora of pedals and <laughs> and effects so i just used an um overdrive um effect on there to kind of just add to the drive of these guitars and that kind of put that where it is where you hear it now um and then i i stack everything i do everything in twos and once again it's really more so just about that image for me it's about just that immersion like sticking you in the middle of of what's happening so um <coughs> you know there's a reason there's a reason to my my madness. Cool. So I think that's it for this. Um, next episode, we're going to cover keyboards. That's going to be an interesting one. Um, bringing in the keyboards is definitely going to be an interesting one. All right, guys. I thank you guys for just coming along with me on this mixing with Rod journey. Um, I look forward to to hearing your feedbacks about the actual song. The song is out um, on uh, January thirty first. So um, I would love. Um, I just can't wait for you guys to hear it and give your feedback. Um, exactly what you hear um, on the release the official version this where i'm literally mixing with you guys so taking you guys through the process so you guys can see and hear and see how it all came together so cool beans uh the red mark that you see here is the official length of the song of what you guys going to be um receiving on when you purchase the song but everything after this is the reprise and i think i may have to i'm going to leave that part for the next series of episodes and just um how we approach mixing from that point because it's going to be a totally different vibe um the reprise is going to be a totally it's the same session but the reprise is going to be a totally different vibe so um yep um please follow subscribe share thumbs up do the whole um you know the whole package of stuff that you know you guys do on videos and please feel free to share this um share it with everyone you know that's interested in engineering that's interest, interested in learning about mixing mastering methods and ask questions if you don't understand ask questions and i'll explain to the best of my ability this is my way of mixing there's no good way and there's no bad way as long as at the end of the day, it sounds good. <laughs> so that's the goal.
making sure that it sounds good and that it's pleasing to the ear. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to mixing keyboards with you next. Nothing else matters out on all the platforms. Enjoy, 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 enjoy. All right, guys.